Well, what is up, everybody? This is Tikoy, also known as Richard. And uh, today we have a very nice video for you guys. And we're going to be deep diving a little bit into the French. Um, it's part of a series where we have been explaining, um, you know, the different ages as the French. But today we're just going to deep dive just a little bit on why Imperial Age is a last resort as the French. Um, they are so strong in every single age and particularly if you go, go look at their win rating um, most of their games are won in the dark age feudal age and it slowly drops off to the castle age with a slight improvement in the in the imperial age because of their um, very strong siege capabilities um, so let's just jump straight into this and start discussing a few major things about the French, just so you also have a more understanding if you're trying to learn the faction, um, so you understand, you know, what scenarios would make uh, the French specific the French and why certain technologies and certain things are strong, but you m mustn't over prioritize it. Um, and I'll show you a game right after we discuss this uh, to show you, you know, how you can even win against a guy who's Imperial Age and you are not Imperial Age. That does not de uh, determine the win scenario, even though it does make your units stronger because you get the automatic upgrade. Um, but, you know, like the unique units they have right here, uh, the Royal Knights gain bonus damage for three seconds after completing a charge, and Arbitrier uh, deploys a defensive passive that provides five range armor for 30 seconds. Um, so, you know, the influences a unique unit produced from an archery range or stable, not a siege uh, uh, workshop, uh, archery range in your stable um, within the influence of the keep is 20% cheaper and at the keep um, you can actually do research there we go um, which is called the enlistment incentives which makes them another 5% cheaper um, the other one that you need to look for is at your blacksmith which is called your military uh, academy this only increases the training speed by 25% and that's for your um, infantry, cavalry and siege and transport units um, at building. So that would be units like your market units um, or your ships. They all will get a reduced time that it takes to train them and this you can actually already get... Um, in the castle age you don't need imperial age for that so that is some points to take note of um, another thing we would like to discuss is the outpost so the french outposts are really really strong um, they do have the standard upgrade um, but they do quite significant damage and they look i, I don't know aggressive <laughs> is probably the right word um, but they feel like they they are quite a, a tough um building to crack when they do go up but uh, let's start from the basics right you get into the dark age you have your six villagers you want to start training there's a standard build order of your first six villagers straight on to food your first i like a double scout start um just because it does give you that early food lead to get uh, multiple sheep back to the base quite quickly so you sometimes if you have a bad start with one scout and you don't find that immediate sheep you have to transition into other sources of food like berries or um you know deer or even sometimes a dock if the map allows but that that becomes a lot of resources that you have to invest in other options um, so one thing to note with the French is that their um, villagers and scout produces per age quicker. So at your dark age, they are producing 10% quicker. So one second, because it takes 20 seconds to train a villager. Um, at the feudal age, 15 seconds and castle age, 20 seconds. So it is if you if you want to play the double town center strategy like a lot of people do i think the best time to do that would probably be um, in the castle age and one because you have the the faster village training already um you know if you are 
as efficient, focusing on as efficient as possible um, production of your units and not wasting any resources, um, you'll actually have a really nice start at the French. So I don't know, I'm just talking a little bit out of a, a depth of field. So you, you kind of get a, a feel for the French. So the bottom line is, yes, French are known for cavalry. Yes, there is some form of upgrade and, and attack bonus that they get per age uh, with their melee and, and cavalry units, not with their archers. Yes, they have really strong crossbows. But this is to give you a bit of an understanding as to... Um, why certain aspects of the French can actually make you lose a game because of the resources and the um, priority of those resources for argument's sake. Um, in my opinion, I'd rather have two or three scouts and invest um, 180 food into three scouts and walling off certain parts of the base so I know my cavalry or my archers, the, the areas that they are defending is strong enough and keeping up with whatever information you're getting from an enemy so i'll show you in the game when we get there very shortly um one thing to note as well uh you see the lumber mill here is 25 wood normally for most civilizations it's 50 food the training time is the same and also for your mill it's only 25 food so if you have to transition quickly into a mill uh, close to the berries or even just getting the mill up close to the berries uh, so you can do the wheelbarrow upgrade which you see right here in the dark it's really nice if you see that the enemy is playing slow and you're not really going for a very heavy rush um, usually in the feudal age I would get the wheelbarrow upgrade or even the um, survival techniques if you have a very safe deer um, spawn right close to your base. That is two really nice upgrades because the food that you will get from that is quite quite significantly better than what you do without them. But that's if you play into Feudal Age, Castle Age, um, and you'll see that happen in the game we're going to cast as well. Um, the last thing I want to show you is on the... Um, what do you call it? The blacksmith. So, bloomery, decarbonization, and Damascus, Damascus steel. Those three upgrades are automatic for free on the French. Um, they gain this as a civilization bonus for themselves. You don't need any special requirements other than having a blacksmith out. You don't get it until you have the blacksmith out. So, if you go all the way to Imperial Age without a blacksmith, you don't get that upgrade. Um, and it's quite nice to have that plus one damage, especially right after the charge, because your cavalry um, has a really nice upgrade. We'll, I'll show you here. Um, if we go to the stable, they have the cantled saddles, which says increased royal knight bonus damage after charge by 10. So that's again in the castle age and you can get that cheaper as well if you go for uh, the third age landmark which would be the Royal Institute uh, which houses all technologies unique to the French and research is 20% cheaper. So you can get imperial age research um, to give you an example like the archery range has the crossbow stirrups which reduces the reload time by 25 percent that would be there um, this is obviously a castle age upgrade the gabersons um, and that's also just to increase the melee armor of your arbitrailer <laughs> crossbowman <laughs> sorry about that um, and then a really really strong imperial age um, landmark that a lot of people go for is the red palace if you see this up, it is a very difficult landmark to deal with if you don't have any siege. Please do take note of that if you see it up. Um, it's just a very, very strong landmark. Probably one of the strongest castles in the game. Um, and the opposite one is the College of Artillery. This is really nice in team, gates, in team games to get the Royal Cannons, Royal um, New culverins that is long range cannons uh, similar to your siege um, let's just go to the siege workshop so you we get the right names um, there we go we need training springles similar to that you can see 
if you train a siege workshop, you will only be able to train cannons and reboldequins. Uh, I hope I said that right. Um, also, remember, this is quite an, a nice upgrade to get for your siege, um, your greased axles. Um, that does make your units move 20% faster. It makes such a big difference for your army because they always take the lowest um, unit speed when they are marching towards, you know, an attack. Uh, siege works is also nice. It increases the health of your siege engines by 20 and their range uh, and their ranged armor. So that would be against like springles. Um, it's not that big of a difference. Springles are very good at taking out like your um you know your counterweight trebuchets or your mangonel springles are a really good counter for that but your cannons will probably one shot a springle if it is lucky enough to get into range um it has more health so it can survive if you have one or two villagers you know repairing a cannon against maybe two springles you'll probably be able to out repair them um so there's a lot of things that you can practice over time and the focus is not to be perfect. The focus is to understand the French properly so you know when you are progressing into an age, what is the goal there. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is just on the university. This is very standard to um, all factions, but you do get this upgrade of the royal uh, bloodiness, the increased French cavalry health um, with that um royal institute you do get that upgrade you see it right there so you there's specific upgrades that comes available not all but specific upgrades do become available with the royal institute um that makes your life a lot easier and when you train the siege workshop yes that is quite nice but remember there we go the royal culverin this is a long range cannon very low siege damage um, but very, very good at taking out other cannons and, and um, trebuchets or um, mangonels. Um, very, very, very nice to have one or two of them just in the background. You key bind them different to your army so you can micro them and not lose them. It's a really nice um, um, added unit to your army composition if you go into the Imperial Age. Um, so with that in mind, we, you know, you, you have an idea of the landmarks, you have the Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is a market, it's going to be your first option, or you have the School of Cavalry, 90% excluding water maps, uh, you can still rush it on water maps and take them over with the transport ship, but 90% of the time, you're probably going to go with the School of Cavalry um, to get that Royal Knight out and try to use them to uh, get that early, early rush on villagers because um, they're faster than spearmen so you can run around them just be careful about the spearmen and their bracing ability because they will you know four spearmen versus four royal knights if you manage to kill two spearmen and they kill um you know two of your of your royal knights you would have lost a significant amount of resources more than your enemy so just be careful about that another last point just before we jump into the game is battering rams now it might seem counterintuitive on how to get the battering rams but this is an upgrade that you have to get in the blacksmith it is called your siege engineering it's a very quick upgrade one minute so usually as soon as you have my standard composition is four knights uh, royal knights plus your 10 archers uh, if you get that combo right and there's no shenanigans going on while you're getting ready, um, I usually get the siege engineering done first so you have time to move forward and while I'm progressing forward, I would then go for the steel arrow which makes your archers stronger um, to deal with any heavier units like men-at-arms for the English or some um, mirror matches like cavalry and then right after that you know you get the um, fitted leather work or the iron under uh, iron under mesh depending on which one in your situation seems stronger but let's jump into this mirror match um, and show you what exactly happened we are doing a series this is the fourth video of the series um, this is actually a French it's third one in the row. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting all these mirror matchups of French versus French, but hey, I'm not complaining. I like the practice. 
Uh, rank season is starting very shortly. I think it's the 25th of January. It's going to be 12 weeks long, so it's really good to play as many games as you can right now just so you can practice this. So as you can see right now, we're going for the second scout start. First six villagers on sheep uh, using this first scout to just grab those two sheep. Uh, I usually double click them, but you can drag a little box over them. And I move them closer to the villagers so they have less idle time to get to the second sheep. And you can see the second scout comes out. I usually keybind him to with control 3 and the first scout with control 1. Um, I'll show you in the... Let, let's make a time. Let's make a time of 1 minute 50. Um, as a standard to show you how many sheep we can get and how many sheep he can get uh, This villager can build a house. Just keep them in the ring. Um, it's very safe. Uh, it's a very unsafe gold here uh, I didn't micro them because I was focusing on the sheep um, And getting the second scout to root out. So if you shift right click in the shade areas like this um, you know, the scout will move in that general direction without you having to manage them. Um, I do spot this one because I'm jumping between the two scouts and I'm like, okay, let's bring this sheep back. Uh, we're almost at 1 minute 30. So there you can see the first house went up. Second house um, unit or building is your mining camp. Three villagers on gold. It's quite far, so it would have been more efficient if the house was built by the first villager. The second, um, that same villager goes over to the mining camp. The second villager that comes up starts mining gold. By the time this is done, he will then drop that off. So let's quickly pause. Um, if I reveal all, let's go to his perspective. Uh, Flidu. There we go. Um, so he has the standard one sheep there he has four sheep right now okay um on my side we have eight sheep plus an additional three sheep and that's in the first minute and a half already that's the type of advantages you have to use if you have the scout um also understanding choke points um meaning like I know the scout can pass here. It's good to check at the back here if there's any entrances there. So if I had to be defensive, I can wall this off right here. Um, I can wall off right here or right here. Um, you know, and this would be safe. And the scouts right now are trying to get forward, get information on what he's doing. And at the same time, my town center, you can press H to jump to the town center or control two. I bind it to control two. Uh, so I can just double tap two and you'll just jump back to your town center. Um, it's good to get the key binds going as soon as possible. So you practice the efficiency of that. Um, also make sure not to run too close to the enemy town center. This is fine. Um, if you had to be too, a little bit closer, we can see he's already starting his School of Cavalry. Um, we're going to start ours very shortly. I think he was a little bit more heavy um, on saving up food. I had villagers training on a consistent basis. You can see I have two on food already. Uh, I have this five villagers on... Um, food, three on the land on the, on the landmark and three on gold, right? Um, because it's a mirror matchup, let's just compare. He has two on the landmark, so not an extreme rush. He's doing some um, we call this long distance mining or for, uh, or or gathering because it's better to have your um, you know your economy building right next to your units so he's going a little bit harder on the on the gold he has seven villagers on food so still for a he's i think level 20 i'm level 65 at this point um trying to get as much information on him as possible but yeah he has the three villagers nothing special here it is a mirror matchup um we're just trying to be as, as efficient as possible so once your School of Cavalry goes up, right? Um, I'm going to speed this up just to make this video a little bit quicker as we're talking through the, the different scenarios here, right? Um, the School of Cavalry is going to go up. We still are training villagers. We're on 7 now. We are still getting wood. Remember to keep your population um, in check. 
don't don't run out of population space and out of wood you can see we we it goes um, yellow when you are getting close so just keep an eye on it but when you have a stable a archery range and a barracks training units at the same time um, your population cap is 200 so it is good to con um, basically click your villager train a house as soon as it's done you can while it's busy training the house shift right click on the tree again as soon as he's done building the house he will automatically go back and um, and gather um, wood so quick thing to note right now um, we have a scout four scout here we have a four scout here uh, from the enemy's perspective, I don't think you can see this one, the, the two scouts. Yeah, you can see he has no idea my scout is right here. He has no idea the scout is right here. But I have the two forward scouts and I can see exactly what's happening. He has the last carcass of sheep that has to disappear right now. Uh, we're on my side. We are still quite very happy with six sheep it's 250 food per sheep so that's um, quite a significant amount of food he has to transition into some secondary form of food um, that's going to make his life a little bit more difficult because you have to invest other resources in that so two royal knights out for him um, on our side we still have archers coming out we have the archery range still no royal knights the second one coming out now and you can see the resources here on top if you're curious on if we are spending it um, I took the first Royal Knight that I trained um, I wish I could reply rewind unfortunately I can't you can see there's the dead villager um, I charged in got the villager and just saw what type of response he was doing was he m micromanaging these units to fall back um, was he trying to you know cheese this Royal Knight so I just kind of saw an opportunity to try and pick off another villager but unfortunately um, I don't get the second villager because after their charge damage uh, they do that extra damage and the royal knight does go down you can see the villager survived with two health unfortunately um, so I have a scout out this side and I have the scout out here I see he's on the forward food uh, we are still on sheep and I'm just massing some army here because I'm not sure if he's going to rush or not. So I want to keep vision on this side and vision on this side. So I know if he's coming forward, you know, I can um, retaliate with that fight. Uh, the focus of this video is to show you the difference between Imperial Age and Castle Age. So we'll get there very shortly. So we'll speed up the video just so the game can get along standard standard mid game right now you can go forward with this get a blacksmith out um, and then use that blacksmith with um, your siege engineering uh, you can see here we have a market just to balance out our economy because sometimes we're high on food sometimes we're high on wood depending on what exactly we need um, I do scout out the forward mill right here and um, I sent out a royal knight as you can see right now. Let's just get the play speed right. I, I just attack, press A and right click here to get forward. Now there's three villagers here. This is really nice. This is um, just to get some free extra damage off. We get the second villager. I think we'll get the third villager. Um, yeah. When you attack move, I press A and you right click, let's say, close to the mall. It will attack the closest thing in the vicinity of your attack move so if i had to right click the villager obviously we would have continued chasing the villager but we saw what happened with the previous night so i am just sending this scout into the distance right now and sending this royal knight to my base trying to move my army forward um, so if he tries to rush me right now with this um you know we don't end up losing um if unnecessary fight just because of you'll see here the royal knights are a little bit faster than the scout uh horsemen are faster than your scout but that's fine um i think i think i can't see the movement do you see the movement i'm not sure um movement speed 1.62 uh, tiles per second and the cavalry um uh, 1.62 okay so it's it's equal normal horsemen I think they are a little bit faster 
Um, but yeah, still you can see quite nice. We have the the scout of his that we just killed here at the backs. Deny him any information. Um, we have the houses going up here. We have archers. We have quite a significant amount of royal knights. So if there was any push from his side, we would probably see it. Um, and again, going for the harassment on the villager. Just if there's one thing with the French. Small consistent fights is going to save you a lot of pain and struggle with the French. Um, it's really good for you to just focus on getting these. Even one one horseman earlier there got, uh, I think was one villager. Uh, then we got two villagers. We just got another two villagers. So that's five villagers. Um, about 250 food lost. Yes, we do lose two royal knights. But all we're trying to do is being as, as annoying as possible in this early game so we can actually um, you know see what's going on on his side and force him to prioritize focusing on small little things like this and having 13 idle villagers standing not gathering any food um, and then at the same time it's much easier for us to to transition into other forms of food and stuff you know because look at this he's very very persistent on getting this knight because you took something from him you killed some villagers um he's now having to go into farms he has some extra um villagers on stone if you see stone there's a possible second town center or a um possibility of a keep that they are planning to produce very nice little safe food right here um if i was him i would have rather gone for this one first instead of the forward one right here um but he has you have i mean it's 25 wood for the mill it's it's really no problem berries are a slower source of food than any other um but i just ran these knights into the corner here to see how dedicated he was to <laughs> fighting so we have an idea of um you know to understand his aggression later on so if the fight had to break out right now we were very much prepared for it um, okay, so now we have to start planning. Are we going Castle Age? Are we going um, to Rush Imperial Age? And I have to transition these villagers over to Wood now shortly. Um, we have a forward food right now. And now I'm starting to get nervous because 13 minutes in most games, 13 to 20 minute mark are done. Then you're already busy sieging, already having rams at the enemy's front door trying to fight it out and with um, this specific map you have all of this forward resources gold and stone and you only start off with these two little piles of um, 8000 gold right and i have one source of stone so if i have to or actually two um if I have to, you know, have any source of late game capabilities here, you know, it's going to be very difficult to invest so much gold, which is a thousand two hundred gold, uh, to if 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 we go from um, the third castle age, uh, we actually went with the uh, second, uh, 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 the third age quite later, I think, than him. We'll we'll see now, but. I have some spearman training, I have the double archery range, um, the cavalry range, and I'm pushing villagers for, uh, spearmen forward, so I'm defending against any forward rushes on his side, while at the same time maintaining vision. If these units had to move, I would know. Um, and I don't think, again, like, let's just pause here. Um, I don't think he can, he can see me right without now he can see me because the scouts up here but these units probably wouldn't be able to see me up here um, so yeah just use your scouts get some information out I'm just I'm just trying to you know see is he rushing is he not rushing he does have a nice little army um, you can see on his side now he has surplus of gold i have a surplus of gold but he's not spending any food so obviously he's trying to go for um there we go the third age landmark the guild hall i also went for a guild hall but much later than he did um i have my blacksmith up i have some extra um you see there's the automatic upgrade because of the feudal age 
The decarbonization automatically happens once you go into the Imperial Age. Be careful of wolves. When you see them, just attack, move on them. The villagers will survive. Uh, one villager versus a wolf, you will be able to kill them. So I'm just walling off for safety on this side of the map, so I don't have to think about this side the whole time. Now you can see I'm only starting my H3 landmark here. He already has it. Um, so he's he has a significant army, yes. We have a significant army, yes, but you have to choose <laughs> how aggressive you're going to be. Like, I can go forward with this army. I have quite a substantial amount of spearmen. Um, 17, you know, plus 5 is 23 spearmen. This army would probably be able to take him, but I, I have, I'm not 100% sure. So he has the forward gold. I did not know this. Um... He has the scout to stop me from progressing to any forward um, resources, but you know I'm I'm planning for something to happen, so I'm pushing the cavalry out. If he tries to rush me, the spearmen are in front, the archers are behind, so they will brace, and I have the line formation set so I can actually stop any. Um, cavalry from rushing right in here and at the same time with these cavalry on the side if he has to rush forward i can actually go around and attack the archers so it's really nice to practice that when you're fighting um to you know have this little groups going on you can double click any unit and they'll select all of them and control three if you shift click the archers they will add if i sh for argument's sake, let's say I click the spearman, right? And I shift click the archers, they add them. If I uh, click the spearman, shift control click the archers, you see I'm jumping between the two units. If I shift click them, I'm adding them together. You can do the same with cavalry, you can do the same with buildings. Um, so yeah, just shift and control, practice the keybinds. I usually have all my production buildings on control 7 and then you just press tab to cycle between the different units like you can see I'm doing right now. So I have the cavalry selected, I have all selected, archer selected, spearman selected. So if the fight's happening and you just tap to the spearman, right click the horse, uh, the cavalry. Um, just a quick note here. We do see with a scout, I think, I can't remember what I used. Oh, I have a forward uh, outpost right here. This outpost probably won me the game. I'll, t I'll tell you why. Because this outpost was capable of seeing all the way up here. Uh, and I saw this forward red palace and I'm like, there's no way you're going to get this red palace up. Because I know this red palace plus army means GG. You're not going to win this fight. So I forced this fight. As you can see, I have the spearmen trying to face off the uh, royal knights. I have my units rushing in to try and stop this um, red palace from going up. I have some units going to stop the siege. I had zero siege. So he did have an advantage. But um, I had the unit number advantage and we did get some upgrades from the blacksmith. So at this point, I'm still very young in the feudal age. Um, I have zero stone. I can't contest any castles. Um, I am very close to running out of gold right now. So what, what, what do you need to do in this scenario? Also, you have your guild hall, which is producing uh, 20 extra gold or resources per 200 that you have. So if you have 6,000 or 7,000 resources in, um, in the bank, it's going to you know, increase incrementally. Um, so I know I wiped out most of his army when I fought this fight right here with the Red Palace, right? So I'm taking my resource or my, my unit um, training and I'm right clicking the waypoints right here next to the Red Palace. So any extra units that I'm training, um, all of them are going to run move, automatically move forward here so I can stop because he's not cancelling the Red Palace, right? Um, I must manage my army a little bit here. I'm trying to get into his base, trying to put pressure. I thought he would actually call GG here, but he was quite persistent. Um, the best thing to do if you have a unit lead like this, it's not necessarily a good thing to fight units for units. Right now, what we want to do is get a resource lead. Pick off villagers, as you can see here, get some villagers off. These archers are wasting so much time firing at this archery range. That means nothing when I'm getting sieged down by a mangonel. Let's go to the cinematic mode here. 
Um, so he has this forward gold, he has villagers, this is really nice, he has, um, I, I do have the, the, the arch, um, crossbowman right here, just keeping pressure on this um, uh, red palace of his, and you can see how ineffective these units are, I have some archers picking off um, the, the uh, um, stables he's trying to build here at the back, but I, I I didn't really do much. I didn't harass his villagers much. I got I got the wood done, but suddenly he goes Imperial Age. So he pulled the villagers off of gold. He got the red palace up. I'm still in the feudal age. I'm struggling with gold. So at this point, you can see there's a thousand two hundred and sixty gold uh, sitting in my guild hall. Um, keep the guild hall as a last resort. Rather try go for a forward gold or a forward um, um, source of income than just taking your guild hall. The guild hall is basically to get that final punch if you know you have an advantage or if you know you have to prepare for something that's already coming. Don't waste it into research or anything like that. Rather use it onto units or going into a second age if you are comfortably in, in ahead. Like these knights and archers, I am not focusing on them, but it's quite nice. They're just, you know, picking off villagers as they can, stopping this gold from being farmed. And I have to get something happening right now, right? He does not have any units. I don't have any, <laughs> any units. He has a red palace, so he does have the heal under control. He should have won this game. He's a whole age ahead of me. Um, he's sitting on 3,700 food, he's sitting on 1,500 uh, stone. On a resource level, he's much, much more ahead of me. Um, so I have to do something, otherwise I'm going to lose this game, right? So I get the trebuchets out. I don't immediately start firing because I did not have um, their firing at the scout, right? Um, I don't have enough to defend them. I don't know how many units he trained up in this short amount of time, right? So I'm getting the double trebuchets out. I'm training two more here. And I think at this point I start sieging down this red palace. They do out outrange the red palace. Uh, you can see they have a 16 tile range and the red palace um, only has a 10 tile range. So you can out siege the, the, any palace or castle. Uh, with your trebuchets and this is just to show you he's rushing imperial i'm still in the in the in the um castle age getting those special upgrades making sure you see i, I did get the spearman upgrade um we did get the the archers upgrade we can't get the um crossbowman upgrade because that's only obviously in the imperial age um we did get the cavalry upgrade, so it's not uh, royal knights anymore. It's veteran, veteran royal knights, so they do get the extra damage and a little bit extra armor. Uh, we are doing our research in the blacksmith, so we can build siege equipment uh, or defend or be a little bit stronger when those fights break out. And also, your units need to be forward, so you can actually defend these trebuchets if he starts pushing into them. So we do end up killing this red palace right now um but i can show you and i can tell you now if you stick to practicing the french into the castle age and especially water maps water maps tend to go into imperial age um to get those heavy boats and so on but when you're playing the french on open maps like this it's very good to try and use your feudal age and your castle age because the french in the feudal and castle age are really really strong you have enough resources enough upgrades to siege to be very aggressive to be very annoying and harass any forward economy that he's trying to set up you know and we do tend to go, uh, take down this red palace and at this point he sees my army and i think just after losing um his army here and starting to siege into this building he, tap, he taps up so he has a whole age lead on me and just this final point of, of note when you are practicing the French. Any resources like this sitting idly. He has, I'm sitting on, on some resources. I, I, I can't even remember where 
I decided, oh, here I decided to farm some stone um, for a castle. Maybe in the <laughs> future that didn't happen, but <laughs> um, he's sitting on 3,400 food. Why? You're already Imperial Age. This food needs to be either reinvested into, into wood and you mass produce um, stables so you can get cavalries. 10 cavalry out per second with food and gold, right? Because you're already on gold. Um, but you can't sit on this many resources and 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 wait for something to happen. Spend those resources, but practice getting into the, the castle age. Be careful of the imperial age because it's a big investment. 2,400 food, 1,200 um, gold. And it, it can sway your game if you don't have the um, villagers or the economy to support any upgrades from there but yeah thank you very much for watching that um i would love to ask you guys for any feedback on my videos am i speaking too loudly um am i pausing too much am i not being clear enough about the units if there's anything you would like to just add to my videos i would really appreciate it it is a new channel and i am trying to get better at the editing and and building these um these videos i am really really enjoying it um i've probably been streaming now for about two weeks <laughs> it's something i've tried to do for a very long time but you know um it is a big passion of mine to game and age of empires is such a fun game to play right now and um, there is a bit of a learning curve to practice the civilizations and so on and rank is coming out shortly so you won't be playing against you know level 66 players when you're level 20 so don't worry about that um, but learn the different maps learn the advantages and disadvantages of um, you know the different type of forests the the being on a water map don't be scared of water maps practice boats lose games win games you know don't don't be discouraged about losing game even team games team games are really nice to to practice how to get your economy into you know 10 20 000 gold and food and suddenly spend all of it in the blink of an eye to train you know a hundred cavalry um so just just play the game to have fun but these little small um points to note in the start that's going to make the difference of you progressing if you are planning to play in the ranked if you get that early starts right um you know keep up with information we on this channel we're going to try and do the same any specific build order changes or uh tactics that come out you know like springles got nerfed um Spearman got an upgrade against cavalry because cavalry was just way too strong when the game just came out and so th there is a patch coming very shortly now in spring um, and there is going to be significant changes in the game made especially like to the mongol tower rush or the um, Chinese with their um, their cavalry they have explosive cavalry <laughs> can't remember the name right now um, very very potent very strong their spring ults range is insanely strong um i think they have a bit of an issue with the french knights uh, or cavalry in general maybe just still being a little bit strong they might get balanced out um but yeah, small little changes are going to happen. We'll see maybe a meta shift into different strategies, not to use cavalry, rather like with the English, right? The longbowmen, very, very strong in the beginning. Really hard to counter it because of the uh, quick and easy way on how they're getting to produce units. So there's just so much to take note of. But in my personal opinion, pick one civilization, play 50 games of that civilization watch a few videos on it practice it and that's going to really just help you to understand what you're doing in the game and um, make it much more enjoyable for you but thank you very much for watching please do a like and subscribe um, this was just a very detailed um, in-depth guide to finish off the series um, of an imperial age and i personally am not a big fan of the imperial age unless you're playing team games unless you do have um, a very very tight secure base and you have the opportunity to produce those uh, royal cannons and just you know siege the hell out of your enemy um, from afar <laughs> with some units defending but thank you very much please do leave a like and subscribe support the channel and uh, i catch